In this lesson, we'll be covering the disk activity and disk space tabs in SQL Sentry Performance Analysis. The disk activity tab displays activity at the file, physical disk, and controller levels and provides a way to quickly identify latency in your disk subsystem. The disk activity tab can be viewed in both live mode and historical mode. In live mode, you'll see that the segmented lines dynamically change in both width and color, indicating changes in latency. In history mode, the lines are solid. On the toolbar, there are icons specific to this tab. The first will toggle between showing the file grid view and the disk grid view. The second icon will allow you to show or hide any disks that don't have SQL Server database files. The third icon provides a way to sort disks by activity. And in history mode, there are two additional icons that allow you to view either average or total IO information. The top pane shows a graphical representation of your disk system. This view displays the underlying storage, controllers, physical disks, logical drives, and database files. The gray box at the end represents any files on disk that aren't database files. A red color on the logical disk indicates a suspect offset setting. This can affect I.O. performance. Data files will be solid and log files have diagonal lines through them. All of the files for a particular database will be the same color. Clicking on a file will highlight any other files for that database. The bottom pipe represents write activity and the top pipe represents read activity. The vertical lines represent activity between the files and disk. A thin green line represents less than 10 milliseconds of latency. As latency increases, the line will become thicker and change color until it becomes a thick red line. For write activity, that maximum value when the line turns red is 40 milliseconds for data files and 30 milliseconds for log files. The read activity maximum is 30 milliseconds. For more information about the color gradients, you can go here. You can hover over any of the elements of the graphical view to get further I.O. information. For the database files, it will display information about the file as well. A left click will set focus on that item, file, or disk for the other two panes of the disk activity view. A right click will allow you to run a quick trace or a quick report to get more information regarding file and disk latency and IOPS. The middle pane provides similar information as the top pane, but in a grid view. There's quite a bit of information in the grid view. One item that can be of interest is the percent of read bytes and percent of write bytes. These break down information about the activity of the files in relation to other files. This can help identify the most active database files. The other read and write bytes are reads and writes that aren't SQL Server database files. If you're in the disk grid view, you will see the controller information and then can move through the different disks and files. The file grid view will just show the different database files that exist. The colors next to the files are the same colors used in the graphical view. A left click on a file in the grid view will set focus for the other panes in the disk activity tab. A right click on any of the cells allow you to run a quick report or copy the information in the cells. Finally, the bottom pane displays graphs showing read and write latency, IOPS, and throughput for the disk or file chosen in the graphical view or grid view above for the time period selected. Much like the dashboard, you can click and drag your mouse to select an area, right click, and zoom in. The IOPS and throughput graphs also allow you to jump to any other part of performance analysis for that time frame. The disk space view provides information about disk utilization and valuable information on the database files themselves. As with all the other tabs, disk space can be in both live and history view. On the toolbar, the first icon allows you to toggle between disk grid view and file grid view, similar to the disk activity tab. The second icon allows you to show or hide disks with no SQL Server database files. The top pane is a graphical representation of your disk subsystem, much like the disk activity view. 
This view also displays the empty space per disk. Gray areas in this view also display files that are not SQL Server database files. A right-click on any of the database files allow you to run a quick report showing total data file size. If index collection is enabled, clicking on any of the database files will also show you the indexes in that file. The size of each index displays the relative size of that index in relation to the rest of the indexes. A right-click on any of the indexes will take you to the Indexes tab. Hovering over the database files and indexes will provide information about the file size and amount used. Along with information about the type, size, and usage information, there is additional useful information about your disk and database files in the bottom pane grid view. Under Autogrowth, any files where Autogrowth is set to less than 10 megabytes or is set to a percentage will be highlighted since this falls outside of best practices. In addition, those files that have a percentage growth will show you what the next autogrowth size will be. Any log files with more than 300 VLFs will be highlighted, and you can see the number of VLFs that will be created during the next autogrowth. You can find out more about these metrics and information around VLFs here. You can see if and when the latest backup occurred, and if there are databases in full recovery mode that haven't had a recent transaction log backup, they will be highlighted in red. Finally, in the Log Reuse Wait column, you can see if there is anything that the transaction log is waiting on that would affect its ability to reuse space. For example, here we can see that there are active transactions in the log file. Both the Disk Activity and Disk Space tabs can provide information about latency, utilization, and potential issues with database files in your environment. Mm -hmm.